Skeptics. Welcome to the Triple Ones Wargaming Podcast. This is episode 13. I'm your host, Jasper Axelson, joined with my co-host, Zach Wallace. And today we're going to be going over that Data Slate update. Yeah. Hell yeah, it finally came out. We're getting to it. We're rocking with it. So uh, yeah. Another thing that came out today too, just before we dive into this, the uh, band Crusher and Leviathan. Yes, they did. We got an official statement from GW. Yes. Not only banning Crusher and Leviathan, but s- clarifying all of the like uh, what uh, supplements and extra content is still legal for matched play. Yeah, it's awesome. So it looks like they're mm. going to be keeping up with this a lot more, which is awesome. Amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. I love the way they did it too. Not just they didn't just release a statement with Crusher and Leviathan. They came out with that like. Mm-hmm. pdf of what's legal what's not yep for every faction and it, it mostly boiled down to tyranids harlequins and something else e- everything that was like i <laughs> did anyone think the harlequins one was legal i don't think so but whatever it's fine yeah. death watch one did okay whatever i'll take extra clarification over none <laughs> exactly right so mm. that's nice yeah but this uh this data slate zach huge huge for the game oh <sighs> Power armor scary again? Power armor scary. Oof. Harlequins yeah. might have been brought back more into line? Into reality? <laughs> right? Hopefully they're not at like a 95% win rate. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's uh, it's nice though. I, I think I've seen a lot of people get re-energized by this update to the game. Oh, I know I am. Yeah, I am as well. It was getting a little stale, getting a little tiresome, and now it seems like almost every faction's somewhat viable. Right? Yeah, I mean, Ooh. not maybe not to win a tournament, but like, in 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 games with each other. I mean, uh, sisters and Death Guard. They went up. They went up. They definitely went up. Yes, um, Astra Militarum or Guard. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah actually quite a bit because mm-hmm. we'll, we'll 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 get into that. We'll get into Should that. Should we just dive right, right in right now? I like it. Yeah, get right in. All right. So the first thing on this PDF document is the Armor of Contempt rule. So this applies to, just they, they name the official names, but it's Chaos Space Marines, Thousand Suns, Death Guard, Space Marines, um, Grey Knights, and Sisters. Mm-hmm. So this applies to all of them, and what it does is it worsens all incoming AP by one for all of these units, except for Dread Knights and things with shields. Yeah. So except for things with Storm Shields, basically, and then Dread Knights. Everything else, minus one AP from everything to a minimum of zero. Yep. AP one is zero, AP three is AP two, and etc. Power armor just got a lot more scary. <laughs> this is intense, dude. This is so good. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many things are AP one, AP two in the game? A lot. Like, just, and it's not even ignore AP1, it's just reduce the AP by one, yeah. which is big. Ignore AP1 is great, but it's easy to kind of bypass. Mm-hmm. This, it doesn't matter what your AP is, it's going to degrade by one. I mean, man, it, a LAS gun's AP3, or a LAS cannon is AP3, now it's yeah. AP2, so a 3-up goes to a 5-up for a LAS cannon. Yep. On a, and these work on Dreadnoughts, Land Raiders, Rhinos, everything. I mean, yeah, against AP3, a Terminator in cover is saving on, what, a 3-up? Yep. Yeah. 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 Yep. It's uh, it's crazy. I mean, T-Sun Terminators now, I... So, <laughs> all is dust, so they're... Oh. Damage 1, they're getting plus 1 to their save. Mm-hmm. And then, if they're in cover, they have a, a stratagem to reduce damage by 1, so Plasma at AP3, saving on a 2-up. Yep. In cover. Holy crap. That's insane. That's some insane durability. Thousand Suns might be one of the most durable armies in the game right now. I think they might have the best Terminators, straight up. I believe it. They were already amazing before. Right? And now it's just like, they're unreal. So, like, Terminators <laughs> across the board, mm-hmm. like, such a big glow up. Like, yeah, the sword and board, or, like, the board Terminators don't benefit from this, but, like, they're already getting a one-up, four-up, so, I mean... They didn't really need a whole lot. I mean, I don't right. think they needed this. So, like, <laughs> yeah. Power Fist Terminators with Storm Bolters? Actually viable now. Because now they effectively have a one-up save because they have a two-plus save. Yeah. So, it's this is sweet. 
I mean, and even just, like, most of their AP on Thousand Suns guns are AP2. I know their big cannons, like, AP3 base. Yeah. So, like, they got a little bit of AP to chew through their fellow power armors. Right? Like, like I, I need a couple games into Thousand Suns, I think. Yeah. I need to see them on the board and, like, go up against them to really understand the power they have now. I'm excited. Yeah. They needed a little bit of a boost. They did. And same with, uh, like, Death Guard. Death Guard. Mm-hmm. This is cr- Death Guard now is reducing yeah. all AP by one and they damage by one. It's not terrible. I'm not saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> is this enough to make them tournament winning all the time? Eh. But is this enough to like remain competitively viable for people who choose this as their faction? Right. I think so. Oh yeah. Like I think you could four and one with Death Guard now if you're a faction expert. Oh, I believe it. They're still getting like, uh, some tournament placings here and there. Like, right. And now with this boost, I mean, I see him being very solid. Yeah, so it's... I mean, I know as a Grey Knight player, do Grey yeah. Knights are also insane. Because they have a, uh, like, their... Um, oh, shoot, what are they called? Tides. They're Tides. Mm-hmm. So, like, they they can pick one pregame, change it with the spell. One of them is, if you're over 12 away, you are you count as Light Cover. Ooh. Yeah, if you're already in a terrain okay. piece, you count as Dense. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Dense. So they're Terminators, light, man. Minus one AP, plus one to your say. Like, uh, wow. <laughs> so, like, yeah. So let me give you the little juice. So the Paladins, which are, like, the elite Terminators. Mm-hmm. So they they have a two-up save, three wounds, like normal. They, have a, they can take a spell to give them plus one to their armor save. Throw this Tide on them. They don't even have to be in cover. Now they have a zero up. Without even having to be in cover. If they're in cover, they're minus one to hit. And they're reducing AP by one. Those bad boys in cover are taking Laz cannons and saving on twos. Good God. Oh my God. (laughs) Wow. That's crazy. AP four goes to a three up save. That's wild. I'm thinking if you guys have ignore cover, you need to be looking at ways you can get ignore cover. Because oh, the yeah. marine menace is here. I know we were talking about the uh, Exocrine at AP4 ignores cover. Looked good before. I mean, people were kind of shying away from it in in and showing preference towards like Carnifexes with Venom Cannons because yeah. Venom Cannons are really good. But AP4 and ignore cover, including dense, is, yes. is huge. Effectively, like now against the marines, it's like AP5. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you know, because you're ignoring the cover. So, like, AP4 ignores cover. You're putting their Redemptors now at a, th- a six-up save instead of where they would be saving on a... Um, I guess they wouldn't be in cover. But, like, the ignore cover is huge for killing marine bodies. Oh, 100%. Huge. You need ignore cover. If yeah. you can ignore cover, you need to look, at, look for ways to do that. And like you were saying, the AP4 is big on Dreadnoughts because why... Even Dreadnoughts get the Ignore AP one. It's not yeah. power armor. It's Astartes and Adeptus Sororitas and... Anything like, with power armor. Yeah, like, it's it's the entire army. The Rhinos get it. The, yeah, like... Rhinos are good. Now, everything. finally, Rhinos... It's like, okay, this is, this is fairly pointed, finally. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone crying about Rhinos. Like, I still liked Rhinos where they were. Now I really like Rhinos. Yeah, right? So they didn't go up in cost or anything. No. It was just a straight buff. Yeah, nothing went up in cost. So this is arguably the biggest change of this this data slate. Yeah. Like, it's I, so big for the Marines. It, it made power armor armies relevant again. Feel scary. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I, I love this. I can't get enough of this change as someone who owns a couple power armor armies. I can't get enough of this change. Dude, I don't even have any power armor armies, and I'm just excited that power armor is like hard to kill again. Yeah, right? It doesn't feel just like paper, paper mache. Right, they're walking tanks. Yeah, like... it's, they should feel like that on the battlefield. Exactly. I'm excited. I might, the RTT we're going to in a couple weeks, I might just bring a brick at Grey Knight Terminators <laughs> just to throw them on the board. I don't hate it. Just to see what happens. Oh, Tau at AP3, go fuck yourself. <sighs> don't care. <laughs> don't care. Never heard mm-hmm. of you. So, uh, yeah, this was a big one, but the next one is also very big. The indirect change. Zach, oh, huge. would you like to go over the indirect change? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, an indirect fire weapon is one that can target units that are not visible to bear. Uh, if such a weapon targets a unit that is not visible... So, no models in target unit are visible to the firing unit when you select it as a target. 
Then each time an attack is made with that weapon against the target this phase, worsen the ballistic skill characteristic of that attack by one, and add one to any armor saving throws made against that attack. Power armor really doesn't care about indirect fire. Couldn't care less. And because you are worsening your ballistic skill, you are still affected on top of that by dense cover. And any other minus one. And any minus ones, yeah. Yeah, so So goodbye indirect. Tau coming in, hitting on fours, are now going to hitting on fives. Let's say you pop a lightning fast reactions or you're just hidden behind a forest. Now Tau are hitting on six. Sure, they might have full rerolls to hit, but hitting on a six is still... Never heard of you. Right. Like, like, that's bad. Indirect took a huge hit. What do you think of this change? Do you like it? Dislike it? I absolutely love it. Indirect was also, or always super uninteractive. Mm -hmm. Um, It always felt bad for the other person if it was too good. I think shooting indirect is such a big boon that it needs to be counterbalanced by something i don't yeah i agree i don't like i never really liked that much indirect even Mm -hmm. like a little speckle of it it's like just didn't feel good right like the biggest mechanic of the game terrain you're just bypassing and you're just like it's the same reason no one like flyers because they just ignore mechanics of the game that help you win like it takes strategy out of it yeah, just sit something behind a wall and just shoot for five turns of the yeah, game. Yeah, like, that doesn't, that doesn't, like, get my tactical prowess going, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't, I never liked it. Never liked it. As someone who has fielded Hive Guard in every competitive game for, like, the last year or two, thank God, because I am sick of bringing Hive Guard. Like, <laughs> let me take something else with yeah. that, that 300 points, you know? <laughs> right, and, like... As someone who's been bringing a night spinner for the last two two and a half years, I'm I'm fine to see the night spinner go. <laughs> Get out right. of here! Get out of here! I liked it, but like, it's just not. It doesn't feel good. Yeah. Like just blasting things without any tactical maneuvering at all. Just doing it. Yeah, I do like the rotation though. Yeah. Um, because it is nice, like bringing some units in that you haven't used for a while and switching things up, seeing something different on the table. Yeah, like you don't buy a forty k army and just keep it static. Right. You rotate your collection. Yeah, which is always fun to see. Right. So that's nice. Uh, a little side note on this too. I don't know if you saw, said this, but guard ignore this. Yeah, Astra Militarum guard guard you're in the guard so <laughs> astronaut guard and indirect fire weapons so guard completely ignore that rule i like it they don't take the ballistic skill modifier you don't get the plus one to armor save like i like this until they have their codex then i hope that that little bit gets removed yeah but, oh for sure but yeah i like this for now because guard i mean who cares you're playing they're playing guard let them right. let them let them use their wyverns their mana cores let them let them buck let them play with their toys without just accepting like a 30 percent win rate <laughs> right like so I, I like it it's actually big mm-hmm. now they have now guard are the best indirect army in the game yeah yeah by so, default <laughs> yeah so that's that's cool very cool um how about bodyguard do you want to go about, into that yeah well, you know what I, I sure will so essentially bodyguard they just said this is how they're going to rework it they just said hey look replace that old bodyguard rule with the lookout sir rule the only stipulation is now it doesn't matter the amount like the for the bodyguard unit you don't doesn't matter how many models are in that unit if you have one bodyguard unit alive it ignores that like needing three models yeah so that's nice and then they also added in for just for you zach uh <laughs> the tyrant guard can bodyguard the hive tyrant oh yes yes ah. so it's it's normal lookout sir but for a character like hive tyrants where they have more than nine wounds just getting basic lookout, sir, is a huge boon. Th- this might be the best case scenario changed for bodyguard for Tyranids. Yeah, yeah, like, I believe it. Because you can throw those things behind terrain, can't interact, and now your hive tyrant can still be in front of terrain. Like, there are things like people are saying, oh, maybe they you'll have to be able to shoot the bodyguards, maybe they'll transfer wounds. Mm-hmm. This was the best case scenario, I think, for Tyranids. Yeah, I, I mean, Tyranids are largely unaffected. I just have to make sure there's another unit closer. Yeah, and like at least the way I know you play, you're usually sending something up. Right, I got something in your face every turn. I like my waves. Yeah, you like sending waves, so yeah. this 
This, but uh, as a whole, I like this change. I'm a sisters player. Mm-hmm. As I said last week, I'm fine for sisters dying so everyone else may live. <laughs> this rule is getting ridiculous. Yeah, really. Like bodyguard needed to be toned down. Another uninteractive rule, basically gone from the game. Snipers now matter. Yep. Which is nice. Like, yeah. I'm fine with the uninter- interactive things being changed. Yep. I'm good with that. Take out the feels bads, you know. Right. So like. And now snipers, dude. Snipers are legit now. Yeah, like, absolutely. Like they're they're relevant again, right? Like no longer can my little T three like four wound sister bodies just be fine hiding behind their bodyguards. Ugh. Yeah, you got to be careful. You got to be flipping careful. Look out for them jesters. Yeah, <laughs> those jestery boys. <laughs> Speaking of sisters, Zach, do you mind if I take the sisters? No, you- uh, I did just want to mention real quick. Uh, I saw a couple people talking about this uh, online, but they were talking about... So, the the entry about bodyguard abilities says, The following are bodyguard abilities. Bodyguard, cold-blooded bodyguard, guardian organism, guardian protocols, honor guard, uh, operated artillery, protectors, swarm protectors, the van, the Varguard's duty, and watchmen. And people are pointing out, oh, well, my bodyguard rule has a different name. I would like to point out it says, the following are bodyguard abilities. It's my belief that these are simply examples. Right. Not a comprehensive list. Ah. It says, change the end of all bodyguard abilities from blank to blank. So, those are the ones listed as examples. But every instant of a rule that allows bodyguards is being changed. By and that's how you should play it. Absolutely. Like, like stop like, being a rodent. <laughs> Come on. Like, if you're trying to game your way into old bodyguard. Like, I, I appreciate people when they say things like this, like, hey, GW, this needs to be clarified because it's mm-hmm. unclear. But stop being a little gaming rodent. If you're trying to actually play with old bodyguard on any of your bodyguard rules because it wasn't named specifically... You're that guy. You're that guy. Stop. Yes. Stop. Yeah. You're, I, absolutely, though. Like, they've been getting better at, like, finding some of these weird interactions GW has. and yeah. Or at least, like, naming, like, hey, these are some, but I guess... They didn't do it here, but I, I like your wording with that. I, I agree. Right, it says the following are bodyguard yeah, abilities, say, not like the change, following are... Change the following. Oh, right, Or yeah. these are the following ones. The right, yeah. It's... So, you scrodents out there, knock it off. <laughs> Stop. Yeah. But thank, that was a good thing to point out, though. I did not realize right. people were... Yeah, I, I heard a couple people mention that, and I just wanted to specify, like, this is a an umbrella change that affects every bodyguard type rule right yeah like don't try and rule lawyer your way out of this this is yet another reason zach they need universal special rules i, I will agree. die on this hill zach i'll die on it bring them back bring them back so then you don't have to change every little one you can change one wording yep you have one to worry about not a million give them the bodyguard keyword yes you know what i'm saying have yeah. the special this gives bodyguard keyword all you have to worry about is changing that. Yep. God, Agreed. Please, GW 10th edition. Please. <laughs> please. It just makes sense. It just, I love it. But uh, on to the sisters. I'm, oh, yes. I am oh, excited yes. about my sisters' changes. So in addition to Armor of Contempt, they now get a miracle die at the start of each turn. Used to be battle round. Yep. Now it's turn. I get an big. extra five miracle dice per game. Yep. Holy crap, this is big. It's a lot of extra miracle That's, dice. Oh, I can all of a sudden, instead of playing my Our Martyr Lady, which like their whole thing is, we give you a bunch of miracle dice. Mm-hmm. Now I don't have to necessarily play them. Now I can play something else and still like try and get that Leap of Faith secondary. With yeah. Like, I'm, instead of sacrificing the Killy for mission playing, I kind of don't have to do that now. Right. I might be able to play some Bloody Rose, so this is a huge change. Um, I, It's unreal. I'm yeah. excited to play with it. I haven't played yet played with it, but I'm excited. It's very cool. Like, even even if you didn't want to test out some, uh, some of the other orders and just want to stick with Old Faithful, like, now you got CP out the ass. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, 
or not not command points yeah, I, yeah, yeah you yeah, got you got miracle dice. dice out the ass yeah like, <laughs> quite literally like i'm i'm kind of almost even excited to play maybe even try my our martyr lady where i get miracle dice out the ass anyway and now <laughs> mm-hmm. i'm effectively giving now i'm getting even more miracle dice out the ass oh yeah oh that that could be a lot of miracle dice i mean it's big for uh ebon chalice which is mm-hmm. uh in order you used to see when you were able to combine them and now you can only pick one sub faction but ebon chalice has a stratagem or it's an ability that lets you take two miracle dice and discard two miracle dice and turn them into six so mm-hmm. basically like to take two miracle dice smash into a six yeah. now you have a lot more to do that with before it was kind of hard to do it with not so hard anymore right so i like that there's a lot of cool things with that so i'm excited but uh the second change because armor of contempt exists now they also put an armor of contempt that any rules that ignore ap do not stack with this Mm -hmm. so let's say you had something to turn ap 2 into ap 1 you do not then get to like take armor of contempt and stack it so they changed the valorous heart um sub faction trait from like reducing ap they changed that entirely to just you cannot reroll wounds against the sub faction yep no wound rerolls that's pretty flipping big that's very big that's honestly really good like i mean granted are wound rerolls as common no but they're powerful and people some people rely on them oh uh tyranid monsters if i want to guarantee i'm doing a bunch of damage output i will handily spend one cp to reroll wounds just not having that option against sisters is big. It's scary. It so really that is. That sub-faction yeah. is scary. That order is scary for things that rely on wound rerolls. Yeah, it means my uh, Hive Tyrant with five attacks. It's a lot more <sighs> iffy now, A lot honestly. more iffy. That very, sometimes you just roll poorly. You just roll those ones. Yep. Oh, you know? yeah. So I like this change. That Valorous Heart is so durable now. Oh yeah. So now you're now Valorous Heart is just reducing all AP by one, which is better than they were doing before, and now you also can't reroll the wound roll against them. So I yeah I love that. Great Very change. Cool. Um, any other thoughts on Sisters before we move on? Oh, I think that just about covers it. I I'm excited to see what they do. I know you've been looking forward to bringing your sisters back out. Yeah, I uh, yeah, I was playing them before too, and it was fun. Oh, yeah. Like I still I just love playing sisters, but it's just ju- anytime you get new rules, you're just juiced up about it. Hundred percent. Like they weren't shelved, but I'm even more excited just to put them on the table. Yeah, I feel that. The uh, the next one, Zach. You can go ahead and take the custards. The custodes. All right. All right. So, uh, custo- oh, oh, custodes. No. How the mighty have fallen. Oh, they, they might as well. Oh. You know how when uh, Gilman came back, they re-dyed their hair from black to red because they have hope? <laughs> go ahead and dye that back black. <sighs> Yikes department. So, first of all, change the third bullet point of the detachment abilities of an Adeptus Custodes detachment to read... Troops units in an Adeptus Custodes detachment gain obsec. So all of their infantry essentially lost obsec. Only the troops retain it, like other armies. Every other army. Oh, oh man. I hated that when I saw that. Yeah, that's rough. Like the being able to give all of your foot slogging units obsec. It gave you some variety. Now I feel like you're just going to be forced to take troops. Yeah, like, I'm seeing, like, as we keep going into this, like, people will say, like, yeah, you know, now you're just moving to infantry heavy, blah, blah, blah. But it's like, you're so limited now. I mean, like, the codex before, everything was obsec. Well, everything besides vehicles. So, Mm -hmm. like, bikes were obsec. I get the bikes not being obsec in this new codex, but, like, the characters, but even even worse well that was more powerful but like now like terminators why would you even take a terminator right they're 60 points and they're not obsec and they're not killing as much as you'd want to it hurts it's yikes man wardens now they were the bodyguard now bodyguard isn't the same and they're not obsec you're never seeing them Mm -hmm. like like you said i just i just feel like your army is gonna be like the just troops just a troop yeah. army it's gonna be like a it's a crusade game now yeah kind of a bummer <laughs> yeah that's i don't love that so if that wasn't enough 
Add the following to the esteemed amalgam Emperor's Auspice and Martial Discretion Stratagems. You can only use this stratagem once. Yikes. So the... I'm not even going to rename name the names. I'll just tell you what they do. The one, one of those was the turn off all rerolls. You can only use that once per battle now. Oh my, that's bad. Yep. That's bad. The other two, one of them was to let you change stances for the battle round, which was really good, and now you can do that once, and it's a gimmick. And then the other one was the uh, Emperor's Chosen Specific, which let you change shield hosts. Like So basically, change from Emperor's uh, Chosen to like Shadow Keepers and get their sub-faction bonus. That one needed to be nerfed, probably, I think, but did it need to be once per game? That's so... Anything that's once per game is... Man, that's... What is this, an orbital bombardment? What the heck? It's pretty harsh, man. That's very restrictive. Once per game is... It, it turns from something you build around, something like your tactic, like your strategy almost, mm-hmm. to a gimmick. Yep. To a gimmick, to something you're not relying on, you can't... I, you can't build around a once per game turn on mm, rerolls. Absolutely not. And in, in such a like in an army that's this tiny. Like, yeah. <sighs> it's it's a shame. I I was expe- I was expecting if anything this would go to two CP, mm-hmm. which would have hurt. But it would have been like okay, now you have to be more careful with how you use it. Now it's just like ha ha ha. Yeah. If if they raised it to two CP, it'd be like okay. I can still use this a couple times, but any more than that, it's starting to get costly and you really have to think. Now, just once, it's it really hurts. Like, 2 CP, it's like like you said, I think you, you could probably comfortably build in twice, maybe an emergency third. But the two times at mm. least lets in, you know, on more than that if you want. But, like, if you build in twice, you at least have a couple times to do it when it really counts. Yeah. Like, what one CP, it was kind of brainless. You know, you just do it. But, like, fair. once per game, man. I, th- I think they overshot the mark on that one a little bit. And if you think they overshot the mark on this, Zach, go ahead and read the third bullet point. Because not only is this stratagem once per game, but take it away. If all of that still wasn't enough for you to realize that Custodes have fallen... Change the Adeptus Custodes keyword in all instances on the Arcane Genetic Alchemy and Emperor's Auspice stratagems to read Adeptus Custodes Infantry. Ouch. Infantry locked. Yikes. So bikes no longer can turn off rerolls. Dreadnoughts can no longer turn off rerolls, which is kind of how they survived Mm -hmm. no longer do they get transhuman for some reason it was such a big deal that bikes would get transhuman but all tiered monsters are transhuman like all (laughs) synapse like what yeah what the heck like i'm not saying tiered shouldn't be but why like why why restrict it so heavily just before like giving it so liberally right I would have liked to see all of these just be two, like go up one CP cost. Yeah. Remove that obsec trash and then make all these stratagems go up one CP and then see where they go. Maybe, right. Because like they didn't up tra- any of the point costs on anything. So you're mm-hmm. still bringing the same list. Well, you could, you're not anymore, but you could bring the same list. Um, but, <sighs> you know, I'm a doomer on it. I don't, to be fair, I don't main custodes. I just play them here and there. Um, but and some people I've saw have said like, "Oh, they're still okay." I don't know, man. I even thought before they were okay. Like I thought they were just really strong, but I didn't think they were like, "Oh no, custodes, mm-hmm. I'll never win." And now I'm like, "Oh, custodes, let's go!" <laughs> like, mm-hmm. man, Ugh. disappointment. I. Ho- this will be a good test to see if in the next one they can reverse some of this if it's too much. I would yeah. like to see that. Cause they don't, you don't see them giving out buffs very often. No, it's more like, nerfing to like rein things in. Which is like I, this data sheet has seen a couple like the armor of contempt, great buff, right? And They're couple, actually buffing stuff. Now. A couple other ones we're about to go over. So like I'm, I'm excited for the future, but we haven't yet seen them 
give a nerf, take a nerf. Yeah. Take a nerf away, you know? Like, yeah. It'll be interesting to see if they can do that, because right now, you heard it here fo- first, folks, I think they're B-tier. Absolute, absolutely B-tier. No yeah. way. I don't see how they're A-tier. I mean, like, I guess you could maybe, like, oh, this fringe all-infantry storm shield build, but it's like, man, that's... You could... I don't know. That doesn't that doesn't feel the same as like several different builds being viable, you know? Right. Like we've had the conversation like does a single competitive build make a faction good? Does 3 Riptides, 3 Commanders and 40 Shield Drones make Tau good in 8th edition? <laughs> no. It no. makes that one list good, not the faction. Right. So, yeah. Disappointment is all i'm not mad i'm just disappointed (laughs) yeah um well maybe we move on to uh to happier circumstances oh would you like to cover the next astra militarum you're in the guard son (laughs) so i'll just kind of go over these fairly liberally and you can just tell me if i missed anything perfect so they uh they kept their lehman russ tank commander thing you have a two-up save so Mm -hmm. that's cool uh, they got some insane buffs, though, Zach. Yeah. Uh, they cha- They have a now rule where if every regiment is the same, which it's going to be, because the rule where you can't take two sub-factions, um, yeah. everything just wounds on a six now. Auto wounds on a hit roll of six. Yeah. Everything. Just las guns. Las guns. Mm-hmm. But, I mean, this is even big just on, like, las cannons, tank demolisher tank, like, just everything. You hit on a six, you wound yep holy crap this is strong it's wild it this, really this, is this is crazy dude the uh, like i don't have the ex- like i'm sure you've seen them floating around the statistics on the damage output has just increased dramatically on this army oh it's insane like yeah absurd that really that change alone could be huge right just that one but wait there's more hmm um, and this is in addition to the indirect change as well. Uh, <laughs> so guard, guard infantry now are 60 points and their weapon, weapons are free. Yeah. Uh, you can take, uh, I think it's a Vox caster is like five points. Um, or some something like that but yeah like all of the uh the war gear options are just reduced to zero cost yeah that's... So just take a las cannon take a like just throw those upgrades on everything you possibly can <laughs> the fifth grade you building your army just saying this gun looks cool this gun looks cool you are so happy now that's that's how you're running them <laughs> that's how you, you just get to run them as you see like oh this is cool it's a cool yeah. cool thing you are now power level yeah yeah a little bit (laughs) um yeah so that's cool um the next one is if you have the voice of the command ability you now get to use that order twice so you get to go pop pop and use that's nice i don't know if this one was there last time i don't think it was but i don't know if that one was i know though like uh if you use a command and everything within six like that one already was uh the the take aim first rank second rank um, I know that one was. I'm not sure if the uh, doing it twice is. I also, the but. tank commander now can choose a friendly vehicle regimen unit within six instead of just the Lehman Russ, so that's cool. That's kind of I don't cool. know if that's the same either. I don't, don't, I play. don't play guard. So we, like... don't, we, we don't play guard, and it's one of the few factions we don't go up against regular, regularly, so yeah. we don't know a whole lot, but just those two those two first ones the infantry being just flat 60 points for 10 guardsmen and weapon upgrades go ahead and then honestly the auto wound on sixes army wide dude army wide so yeah i love guard right now i mean i don't know where they're at because i just don't play against them Mm -hmm. don't have anybody that knows them we have people that collect them as a painting thing but not like playing them yeah so who knows but i mean if i'm a guard player i'm ecstatic i'm happy yeah, I want to see. I want to see some results in the next week or two. Hell yeah! Well, uh, with that, shall we go on to Spice Marines? Spice Marines. All right. So, change the second bullet point of the Forged in Battle Salamanders chapter tactic to read: 
Each time an attack is made against a unit with this tactic, that attack's wound roll cannot be re-rolled. I believe this is just another instance of it was reduce AP by 1. Since they all do that now, they're replacing that ability with can't re-roll wound rolls. I mean, it's still really good. This is better on uh, Space Marines, I think, than Sisters, because mm -hmm. throw this on Terminators? Yeah. Oh, yeah. my lord, Zach. Terminators, you can get get those Salamander Terminators out. Now they can't be re, can't re-roll the wound roll against them? What the heck? Oh, yeah. This, this is huge because from Space Marines basically getting the Salamander's chapter tactic faction wide it's it's essentially like salamanders just got a bonus tactic yeah like i know some people i've seen some stuff like with the sisters and some people with salamanders don't know what they're talking about but they say like oh man this is a bummer because now everyone does what um salamander does and it's like yeah but now you do even more right now you're crazy like yeah i would take this in a heartbeat let, let the ultramarines reduce ap by one you can't reroll wound rolls against me <laughs> mm-hmm and this is in addition, I mean, I don't know all their strats, all their spells. It's been a long time since I've played Salamanders, but I know they have a, a spell to plus one toughness. Yeah. They can put that on anything. So they can put <laughs> plus one, they give a toughness nine land raider that you can't reroll the wound rolls against. Oh, I don't hate that. I don't hate that. Uh, aggressors, they're, make them plus one toughness, can't reroll the wound roll, and they can be transhumaned. I don't hate that. It's not bad. Not bad. Um, so yeah, I I like that a lot. It's with the Spoice Marines. Yeah, nice and simple. Yeah. The uh, next one, the Death Guard. Ooh, baby, yeah, Death Guard. Sir. <sighs> Death Guard, man. Give it to them. <laughs> I'll give it to them good. So Blight Lord Terminators and Death Shroud Terminators. Guess what, Zach? They're OPSEC. Gain oh, the yeah. objective secured ability. Like we are saying, in addition to that minus one AP oh, and minus one damage, just innate to Death Guard. They, yeah. Like, I, they needed, they needed something, as we were saying last episode. This is, this is good. This is a good start. Yeah. I, like, we don't have someone that routinely plays Death Guard in our meta. We have people that, like, will play them sometimes, but no one that truly mains them, at least anymore. So we don't have games into this or like games against Death Guard recently, but like yeah. I got to imagine this is enough to like make Death Guard scary again. Oh yeah, like, I I would love to see it. Like, I'm I'm actually worried about Death Guard now. A little <laughs> bit, right? Like it's kind of a gut they're a gut check thing before like they were before mm -hmm. where you know, m maybe they're not winning tournaments, but like if you go up against them in a tournament and you're not ready for Death Guard, you're not going to be ready for this, like, the amount of not dying they're about to do to you. Oh, yeah. Like, man, their defensive profiles are insane. And stack this with some other, like, like that Warlord trait that doesn't let you reroll wound rolls if you're, yep. or any rolls if you're within Contagion. Mm -hmm. They can flash Outbreak that so they can put that somewhere else on the board. All of a sudden, I mean, dude, this stuff's hard to kill. It adds up. It I, really does. I know for my Eldar, like, they, the Death Guard have always been, like, a hard matchup for my Eldar. They yeah. always have been a hard matchup. Like, the minus one damage, I have a lot of two damage stuff, and, like, now it's even harder. I believe it, yeah. Like, I'm scared of these guys. I mean, mortal wounds are kind of going to be my answer to them. Do mortal wounds. They are not good into mortals. Right. That's an, a decent counter into Death Guard, but... Yeah, so I'm loving this changes. It's going good. So we've hit a couple buffs. We've hit a couple buffs. Now we're on to nerfs. Harlequin, Zach. Harlequin. It had to be done. You didn't even register. I said Harlequin. It's Harlequins. <sighs> it had to... Be, yeah, I'm just too focused. <laughs> it had to be done. I, as a Harlequin player, I fully expected this. Honestly probably got off a little lighter than i could have expected a little darker lighter or darker <laughs> hmm thematic but yeah i agree like i was i was a little worried that they'd go a little too heavy-handed and just bomb yeah. the faction out of existence but uh take it away zach yeah so um the the big thing is uh void weavers went up 40 point space Oh my! So uh, that nine void weaver list was it? Kiss it, um, it good night. It's 
through went up like 360 points yeah it's like 1170 now for nine of them yeah i think so, it went up 400 i think the like the list some of uh, the most popular lists with nine of them are going up like 400 points what is it in addition to the skyweaver stuff yeah oh yeah like because the the sky we or the uh the transports the star weavers star weaver, also star went up uh 10 points a piece yeah so if if you're bringing nine void weavers and say like three star weavers yeah your list went up like 400 points <laughs> um which is is really a considerable amount <laughs> yeah like, <laughs> like that's going up 20 percent. that's a lot that's, that's a lot um in addition to that uh they took out some of the the more janky things so while they didn't change the light uh sadith rules at all i kind of thought they were gonna exclude vehicles from that yeah was my guess but uh rather than doing that they they changed the mirror architect pivotal role so rather than everything every harlequin's unit within six inches uh of the shadow seer being six inches further away for the purposes of targeting them uh so if you're shooting at them and they're within 18 they're treated as being 24 inches away um instead of being every unit within six now it is a command phase buff where you choose a core unit within nine inches and until your next command phase that unit is treated as being six inches further away so it went to one unit now i don't think you're gonna see this nearly not only as much. one unit it's one, one core. core uh when i read this i just heard taps playing in the background you're never yep. seeing this. Never. No. I mean, fringe cases on a big blob of jet bikes. Fringe. It's it's still a 25-point upgrade for something you might use two turns of the game. It's not even that, like, for one unit, Ugh. it's not a big buff. I don't like it anymore. No, uh, I, I wouldn't bring it. If I'm if I'm playing with Quins or souping no. them in, you're not bringing this. No, I'll bring a different pivotal role, or I just won't take one on the Shadow Seer. Yeah, now. like, I, you know, as someone that routinely plays against them, it's in my benefit to hmm. like this, but I, I did feel a little sad. Yeah. If this was the, even an, if this was even just an aura for core, if it was, like, an aura for mm -hmm. infantry, like, so it includes characters and core, I don't hate that now i don't hate that change right. if it's not if it does if it just excludes vehicles that's fine <laughs> but now e ah, man you're not seeing this. you're not seeing this yeah you're not seeing this um i could live with that my honestly the biggest the biggest blow to my my uh, <laughs> to fun here your harlequin heart to my harlequin heart so the final bullet point is Change the favor of Kagarak Warlord trait. So that was the Warlord trait where for a hit, wound, damage, and save throw, you could just turn the result into an unmodified six. So now it is uh, once per turn when you make a melee hit roll, a melee wound roll, or a saving throw for this Warlord. After making the roll, you can treat the result as an unmodified roll of six. So no more using this on your Death Jester to get sixes to hit for the additional three hits no matter what that was a really really good did it deserve something to bring it back in line i would say so no more american sniper brad pitt Ch death jester <laughs> you're done like he's done like, uh, uh jet jester's oh my lord death jester's <laughs> oh my <laughs> lord you get one beer in uh, <laughs> Jeez. Uh, death jesters are still in my opinion really good but oh yeah this guy is no longer i mean you don't you don't have one that now just mercs characters right yeah it's Which, it's a shame it's, but yeah snipers do need to be tempered like since they can target things especially without bodyguard right like <sighs> I think it did need to happen, but it is sad to see go because I never got, I, especially because I wanted to try it at least once. Right? Yeah. I think you only got like one or two games with it. <sighs> one or two, maybe. You wish you yeah. played a couple more. Right. It was so much fun, and I get why they did it, but it's still a little sad. It's sad. Yeah. Um. 
Oh, I can't remember what I was going to say about this. But yeah, yeah, it's, 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 it's a bit of a bummer. But I'm just going to... Keep trucking. Yeah, with the change, I don't think you'll really ever see that Warlord trait. No. No. Yeah. It might be useful for a saving throw, but... You'll still eh. see Jester's. You might now yeah. see the Mortal Wound one and the uh, minus two to move and no Overwatch. You might see yep. that more now. Yeah, I could see that being taken in place of this one. But honestly... Even just, you know, rolling the, the three dice and just hoping for a six could come up clutch. It's not terrible. It's not. It's actually still not terrible. Especially if you want to throw a fate di- or a um, laughing luck, god luck die. Luck die re-roll. Right. Not horrible. Not terrible. But definitely sad. Right. Will you pay, I think it's like 15 points for it? Eh, maybe, maybe not. Maybe. Maybe not. Um, but yeah. All, all in all, how do you feel about these Harlequin changes? like them hate them they were very much needed i mean i'm not super happy about the my super sniper going away it's been twice now where my death testers have gotten insanely good and then like quickly after they get nerfed back to reasonability come back to earth and you're like dang it right like it it makes sense it's much more reasonable the logic side like logical side of me is like yeah this this makes sense but the the Harlequin player in me is like, oh, I wanted my super sweet jester. Right, like, you just want him to be just f- super feared. Like, oh, no, not that guy. Please, no. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so, yeah, moving moving on here. Uh, I think the next thing that's changed is the Tau Empire. The Tau. Um, since you play Tau, do you want to just take it over? Zach? Yeah, yeah, take I can, over I can Tau? certainly do that. Um, so... The first bullet point, so change the second bullet point of the Montka ability to read. Each time a model in this unit makes a ranged attack that targets the closest eligible enemy unit within the range shown on the table below, re-roll a wound roll of one. So notably, what what this does is it removes the Montka ability for the additional point of AP within Montka range. And you know who just got better at ignoring AP, Zach? All of Marines. Oh, no. A double whammy that really puts the hurt on some of their weapons. Yes. Yeah. That's a big, that's a big, uh, boon. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's really big. Like, um, nice for Space Marines, it hurts Tau a little bit. Yeah, it hurts Tau, I think, a lot more than I initially thought on the first read-through. Yeah. Which like, I oh no. I mean yeah, yeah it's hard to feel to bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to feel bad for Tau right now. But not like I want like my fellow Tau nerds to have like a bad time. No, but, yeah. Um the the next bullet point that's a, that's a big one, but the next one is change the first bullet point of the devastating counterattack Farsight Enclave's tenant to read each time a model with this tenant makes a ranged attack that targets a unit within nine inches. The target is treated as having a marker light token. So the change being, it used to be within 12 inches, you treated the enemy unit as having a marker light. Now it's within 9. Notably, you can no longer get the free marker light out of Deep Strike. Notably, that Farsight reroll, Omega level reroll strat, that 3 CP reroll, everything in your mom. Like... (laughs) Uh, yeah, so that right. com- that wombo combo is tamed a little bit. Yeah, I would say it's very tame. Like it, you still have a chance to get pathfinders or something around a corner yeah. to like maybe pop a marker light, but it, it makes it less of like a just auto proc. Like you don't just yeah. procure it automatically. Um, what do you feel about this change? That that one. I like it. It's reasonable. Um, yeah. It keeps things from being absolutely devastating out of Deep Strike. It does hurt, like, my Deep Strike-centric Farsight Enclave thematic. build, which is thematic, but I get it's kind of... A, it's very much a feels-bad. People are dropping in with, was it, like, 10 or 12 air-bursting indirect shots at AP2. <laughs> like, it was insane. Rerolling everything. Yeah, it was disgusting. It was disgusting. Uh, so I'm fine with it. Uh, the, then we remove the core keyword from broadsides. I was kind of expecting this one. We were expecting it. Art of War made a really funny comment listening to their video. They were like, honestly, this is a buff for Tau because now people are going to stop taking broadsides. That's fair. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Those take more crisis. (laughs) Which I thought was funny, but like, 
Mm-hmm. I, I don't know that they. I don't know that broadsides needed core to be removed. Actually, right. I don't. Yeah. I don't know that broadsides really needed to be removed, but whatever. I whatever. yeah. Uh, you'll, yeah, you'll, you'll notice here that crisis suits really didn't take any nerfs. <laughs> like, I, I was like, I would have been fine with broadsides keeping core, because, I mean, what do they get? Reroll ones? Mm-hmm. That's it? That's pretty much it. Like, yeah. I don't... Some things are core locks, but it's nothing major. Or... So, like, I wasn't, I, I was looking more like, okay, is crisis gonna go up at all? <laughs> nope. No, 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 no. Uh, so yeah, the, the final bullet point is add the following to the repulsor impact field and photon grenade stratagems. The charge roll modifier incurred via this strat is not cumulative with any other negative modifier to a unit's charge roll. So if someone's charging you through dense cover and you use the stratagem, they are not minus four to charge. Thank you. Uh, Yeah, that that was, talk about a feels bad. I mean, like one CP minus two to charge is super strong just by itself. But like you were saying, like you could get to such a ridiculous, like, you could be one inch away, but if you're in a forest charging through, you could be needing like a five to make the one inch charge. Yeah, like if I just pop a unit, this is a crisis suits fly, so they're not hindered by uh, difficult ground. So I could just pop a unit of crisis suits in a forest, and now you're getting minus four to charge me. That's that nasty. That feels bad. That feels bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've had people consistently fail like three d six plus one charges versus me. It's like, eh. you're like, oh, I mean, I have to do it. I'm not gonna just not pop it. Right, but at the same time, it's like, oh, I'm sorry, man, but you're minus five right now. So like, it's <laughs> yeah, like, oh, like, you're done. Yeah, why don't you just leave them there? I'll pick right. them up the next turn. Don't worry about it. Less uh, work. What do you think about the tau changes? Enough? Too much? Um. I think they're surprisingly light. I don't want to say it's too much yet, or it's too little. Uh, I want to see how it plays out, because these are some big changes, but they got off a lot lighter than I was expecting. I initially was like, only because looking at Custodes, I'm like, man, they brutalized Custodes, and they just unscathed Tau. I'm like, man, they just absolutely gaped the custodes, left how un- untouched. But thinking about it logically, I like it. I-, I think they did, you know, I don't think they did too little. Yeah. Like, I- I'm glad with the changes. Like, yeah, Crisis are still really strong. Mm-hmm. Um, but A, Crisis are kind of like Tao's thing. But also, you have to, you have to um, realize, too, like, that indirect nerf is huge to Tao. SMS yeah. is useless now. I mean, it just kind of is useless. Like, Hope you didn't glue them. Yeah. <laughs> Hope you are a normal tile player and you magnetize your things because, like, dude, uh, SMS, oh, you're AP1? Well, I'm plus one of my save. You're indirect. Like, so now you're plus two. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, it's, um, it's, it's, I don't, I think the nerf to indirect along with the nerf to Monka, because, like, really that was the thing, like, no one was taking Kalyon, which is an insane ability, like just exploding sixes, then fives, then fours. That's yeah. an insane ability and being able to fall back and shoot, but no one was taking it because Monka was so dummy good. Right. Like, I'm glad the nerfs coincided. Um because like those were the two like feels bad things with Tao, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Like being incentivized to run up and table your opponent and then being able to just sit back and table your opponent both just felt horrible being on the other side so i'm good with it yeah i'm all right with this and we'll see where they go i mean if they're too strong still they can just nerf them again you know right yeah i'm glad they didn't go too heavy-handed they could have gone the way of custodes and just gotten shit on like really just yikes so like i'm glad i'm 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 I still want Tau to be, like, A-tier, so, like, this certainly, I don't think, bumps them out of A-tier, you know? No, they're no. still They're still in A-tier. Very solid still. So, yeah. yeah. All in all, this, all the changes. Um, also, they, in this, in the initial document, they removed Knights and Chaos Knights OBSEC. They reapplied it today. Mm, yep. They so, updated the data slate. Yeah, so th- those now get to have those until their codex which i'm actually really happy about because right why they drop those like because like initially. dude people are playing tournaments in the next like m- before the book comes out people are gonna be playing right. tournaments like that's a feels that bad dumb yeah so i'm glad they they reapplied that quickly rectified it yeah, yeah very quickly which is okay gw okay right. i see you <laughs> i see you 
Yeah. Um, all in all, I love, love, love this data slate. Absolutely, yeah. It changes things up in a very positive way. Like, it reduces the uninteractive elements of the game. Yep. In addition to Leviathan and um, Crusher being gone, like Nids no, are still you. Nids are still the best book in my opinion. Just like from how it's Especially written after the data slate and yeah. after the data slate. But like honestly, they're I don't think they're like moons ahead. No. Now that Leviathan and Crusher are gone. If Leviathan and Crusher remained, they'd be dummy, thick, broken. But they'd be insane. They'd be yeah. stupid. They'd just be dumb. But now it's like, they're just... Someone's got to be the best army. I mean... Right. Someone has to be the best army in the game. So, like, I don't... It's an unbalanced game, you know? As long as they're not, like, so far above everybody, you know? Right. So just I, reasonable. Like, like, yeah, the Metal Scepter's dumb, but, like... I'm excited to see where the game goes from here. I really am. So am I. Yeah, it gives me new hope. Yeah. Like, what are your what are your predictions for the meta? What hot takes you got? Give me the hot takes. The spice. Oh, Give me I the mean, spice. With Tyranids coming out, they're going to dominate for a minute. Um, Custodes have fallen by the wayside. They, sadly, are, are a bit no more. Uh, I'm really worried about a lot of marine factions right now. You're gonna need reps into them, dude. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Well, not only you, me as well. Like, I don't know why I said you. Like, I also <laughs> need the reps into them. Yeah, like AP three, AP four, and up is gonna be huge. Ignore cover is gonna be huge. Yeah. <sighs> Power armor got right scary again. <laughs> Bear, uh, mortals are gonna be big. Yeah. Mortals yep. are huge. Yeah, I will be chaining out mortals and stuff uh, from my tyrannids, but. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to take a, a litany or two that uh, says cannot be affected by psychic powers. Ooh, that is good. that is a litany. Black Templars have it. Gray Knights have it. And Sisters have it. That's very good. My sisters were already taking it. They're still gonna be taking it because um, the only one they, they'd either use that or the plus one attack, so mm -hmm. they'll still be taking it. Oh yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if Black Templar. I mean, I'd tech that in. Knowing Tyranids, knowing Eldar, both are in the meta. Two psychic yeah. heavy armies. Why would I not throw that in there? You know. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I don't know. I'm excited. I think it'll shake things up. Yeah, it's gonna shake things up a little bit. I'm uh, I'm excited. Like you said, power armor is rightfully scary. They're walking mm -hmm. tanks again. Absolutely, as they always should have been. As they always should have been. Like they really weren't feeling like that powerful before that right. durable at all with the amount of ap it was like you're getting the same save as a demon pretty mm -hmm. practically yeah it, it just didn't feel like your armor did anything yeah so yeah i'm excited very much looking forward to it yeah i think gw did an excellent job with this data slate. this is so i mean i saw i saw a bunch of people in the live stream on some of these reviews like early in the morning People are excited for this. People are excited and juiced back up for this game. I've seen discords explode that were kind of dead before. I believe it. So, like, yeah, I'm, I'm loving it. Hmm. Anything else for today? Oh, I think that just about covers it. Um, yeah, we covered all the data slate changes, went into uh, GW actually officially announcing that Crusher is no more, or Leviathan, um, which is huge. And I also just keeping a a log of all the books that are currently legal yeah. or not. Oh, that's awesome. That's excellent. Something I've never thought I would see. I'm right. I yeah. Mean, like it's a small indie company. So like they don't have the resources to do some <laughs> of this stuff. Right, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy about this. Yeah. Well, uh, with that, I guess we'll, uh, see you guys next week. Not sure what we'll be covering. Maybe some, uh, pre RTT talk. Yeah. Potentially. Play it by ear. We'll play it by ear, but uh, until then, take care. Happy hobby.